Uh, so we are hearing that NVIDIA and AMD are going to be getting their licenses to be uh, shipping their chips back into the Chinese market. Is this the silver bullet for the AI industry? I don't think so. I think, you know, the H20 is obviously a very important uh, piece of hardware, and you can see how important it is by the large number of orders that uh, you just cited uh, just now from Reuters. We're tracking about close to a million H20 chips now. It's possibly going to China, 700 or so, 700,000 or so from the uh, inventory itself, and 300,000 additional, as you said. But, uh, you know, the Chinese uh, AI ecosystem is, is incredibly diverse and very complicated and also very vibrant. Uh, I think Secretary Lutnick is more or less right when he calls H20 the uh, fourth best chip that America has on its, you know, skew to sell to China right now. And the interesting thing about the Chinese tech ecosystem is that most of the Chinese tech companies that are placing these large orders do not want to be reliant on Huawei's hardware either, because Huawei is a very fierce competitor in China in every single tech business vertical you can imagine. And therefore, this uh, spigot of H20 being allowed to go to China is a welcoming sign for a lot of these large tech companies, but they still have to think about uh, two supplies of hardware between Huawei and NVIDIA, neither of which are, quite frankly, uh, ideal. We keep hearing about this uh, strong, huge demand for AI, and I think one way we can see that is in the demand for the chips from NVIDIA, and you were outlining some of those numbers. Uh, so these 300,000 chipsets uh, with TSMC, now I'm hearing that any restart to the supply chain is expected to take about nine months. Uh, so with this now, I, I guess we can assume it as a fresh order. What does this say about AI demand? I think AI demand, even within China, is incredibly strong. Uh, whether it comes to AI services, whether it comes to the models that are being shipped out, we have probably four or five different versions of open source models coming from different Chinese labs in just the last two weeks or so. And all of them uh, are climbing uh, at to the top of the chart very quickly in terms of their various uh, benchmarks and measure the model's intelligence. And all these models are being diffused into many sectors uh, within China, not just the consumer stuff that we think about when it comes to chatbot or helping us how to, you know, order something online, uh, these kind of consumer facing AI agent use cases, but more diffusion inside factories, inside the supply chain, uh, possibly inside humanoid robots or other kinds of robotic uh, products that are going to be part of uh, China's manufacturing future. And open source models are very good at diffusing very quickly into real world use cases. And all all these models demand a lot, uh, a lot of GPU to basically serve the inference workload that needs to happen, not just the training workload that has to go into training the models to begin with. We heard from Kevin Hassett, and he said that uh, part of this allowing the access to their chips is to keep China from gaining ground in the tech race. Uh, in President Trump's latest AI action plan, which he detailed last Wednesday, they want to export AI, the full technology stacks, to allies. What are you making of this plan? It's a very interesting plan. So the White House AI Action Plan has a lot of details, actually, and a lot of very specific recommendation that can be summed up as basically an American first approach to AI when it comes to both within America, but also exporting the tech stack abroad. It's actually quite similar, funny enough, to Huawei's AI uh, strategy. Huawei has a AI in a box strategy where it packages Huawei's hardware with a leading Chinese model, and they push that entire package and solution into enterprises and governments, mostly within China, but possibly outside of China at some point as well. And if you look at the White House plan, a big part of that is exporting a similar package that the White House has recommended that various of departments inside the government work with different tech companies in the United States to come up with a package, almost an American AI in a box, if you will, to export that to outside 
allies, partners, and really any country that is open uh, to buying these things. And a lot of uh, the, the, the AI export uh, sale order, if you will, is also being morphed into part of the bilateral trade negotiation as one of the many chips that are on the table when it comes to striking big trade deals that we are seeing uh, across the world. We heard from China on its part that it wants to form alliances in order to cut its reliance on U.S. technology. How do you foresee that panning out? I think the desire and the conviction and the persistence to have its own uh, AI hardware and probably software uh, self-reliance is very much baked in. I think that direction has been set. It doesn't really matter how many H120s or B30s or whatever China compliant variant NVIDIA products or AMD products in the future that are allowed to be sold into China. China's conviction and ambition to have its own tech, uh, tech, uh, tech stack up and down is uh, very much a part of its uh, long-term roadmap. And this is very understandable when you look at the export control that has been placed on Huawei, ZTE, and then more or less the entire uh, country over the last six or seven years or so. It simply cannot rely on exporting products from abroad when it comes to technology anymore. Though clearly, as we can see from the orders, it's very happy to buy them when they are available and there are good business reasons to buy them. But at the end of the day, the self-reliance roadmap will continue.